when I wear that, I have people who knit with needles compliment me and say, where can I get that pattern? And I'm like, well, it's for loom knitting. So you will be the envy of all your needle knit friends or make new ones. <laughs> so show off your skills on the knitting loom with the retreat cowl. This cowl is a loom along series where you're going to be able to knit along for three weeks in a row, learning as you go and learning as you grow. It's an intermediate pattern, but beginners can do it as well, just because of this video series that we're doing. The original was the chic retreat cowl, and we did it in this smaller gauge size, three eighths of an inch, but now we've upgraded the pattern. We've changed out a few stitches to make it easier for you, but also more beautiful beautiful, I think. We've also added in a chunky loom or a large gauge loom as well as adding three sizes. So now you can make it in small, medium, and large. You pick your loom, you pick your yarn, you pick your size, and go. So let's get started on part one of our Knit Along series. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. All the information that you need is written in a handy blog format. So go down to the video description link below the very first thing you do. So don't go anywhere except for there first. Make sure to open that up, see what supplies you need as far as loom and yarn go, and then you want to pick the size, whether you're doing the small, medium, or large. So whether you're choosing a, a thicker or a thinner yarn or a um, smaller or a larger gauge, uh, those are completely up to you. You do not have to use the looms that I'm showing here. Uh, we're using the flexi looms, but you can use your own as long as it uh, works with your gauge and you need the stitch counts. So please go visit that as well. We do have kind of an overview introduction video that you can go click down and uh, look at. And I did answer those on a live video format that um, obviously is going to be a replay for you, but it may answer some of your burning questions. So be sure and do that. Now, I will say that uh, after this three week release of these videos coming out week to week, you can still catch this on the replay and the blog will reflect all of the pattern all together. So if you're joining us as we're doing it live, you're going to see sort of a slow release as I'm showing it to you on camera. I'm going to show you what this pattern looks like. So if you've been wanting to learn new stitches, you've been wanting to learn how to read a written pattern, learn how to read a chart, this is a great one for you. And you get a really beautiful design that quite frankly, when I've worn my um, older version, the Chic Retreat Cowl that this one's based off of, when I wear that, I have people who knit with needles compliment me and say, where can I get that pattern? And I'm like, well, it's for loom knitting. So you will be the envy of all your needle knit friends or make new ones. <laughs> so I can't wait to start this long with you. Go to that blog, get the pattern, look at it. If you do want to get an ad-free version, we will have that available for you uh, to get on Ravelry and Etsy stores. So that is available, but you can read it in the blog every week and uh, get it for free. So just so you know that. This right. video will be uh, in a right and left-handed version, whether you're going clockwise with me right-handed or you see the flipped version and I'm going left-handed and that'll be counterclockwise in the other way. Um, you can see both of those. So that will be down in the video description link below to get those links as well as timestamps. So if you get tired of listening to this beginning part where I'm kind of walking you through the pattern and you want to click directly on casting on, be sure and go there. But if you feel like I'm missing information, come back to this part of the video and you will probably get that question answered and it will also be on the blog as well. Okay, so let's go through this pattern um, just real quickly um, for information on the yarn and the looms. You can get that on the blog, and um, I'm not going to go through that here. Um, we do have abbreviations here, so if you're not familiar with reading patterns and you see some abbreviation you're not familiar with, just consult this part here. Uh, we do not have a necessary recommended gauge, uh, but the main thing you need to do is look at the small, medium, large part. So if you're not familiar with looking at patterns, uh, you can see that small before the parentheses is going to be the first number that you see. And then when it's parentheses, this first one right after it is going to be the medium and the next one is large. So when we go down to measurements here under the skinny, this cowl is approximately 11 inches high and it's 26 inches wide. That's the measurement in circumference all the way around. Uh, if you want to make the medium, see how after the parentheses we see 32 and a half inches wide, that is the medium. And then the next one is listed 39 inches and that's the large. When we go down to the chunky, you can see it's approximately 11 and a half inches high by 26 wide. So they're roughly the same size. 
and the medium on that one goes to 36 and a half inches and the large goes to about 47 inches. And these are approximate numbers depending upon the yarn that you use. Now for the cast on, I recommend the long tail cast on or the chain cast on for this pattern. So you'll need a hook, whichever one fits uh, between your pegs really well. And it doesn't matter what size, just um, whatever will pull on the right yarn for you. If you like that cast on, uh, I'll show you how to do both of those. Um, if you're using the large one, you may enjoy using the chain cast on a little bit easier. On this next page, I'm just uh, spelling out uh, information that I'll go over in the video here about the Indian cross stitch section and that will be in part two. Uh, we also talk about the knit stitches. Uh, we're using the letter K to denote a U-wrap knit stitches and EK denotes an E-wrap knit stitch and they're not interchangeable in this pattern and they're made specifically so go ahead and use the ones that I'm doing uh, in the video. The E-wrap yarn over is something that we'll handle in a uh, part two. So don't worry about that for now. And also the bind off. Let's talk about color changes just for a second. So um, while I design this as a one color, if you choose to switch colors, I recommend doing it on a knit round only. And we will have video tutorials uh, to walk you through what you're seeing now. And those will be clickable if you get this pattern later on. So um, let me show you real quickly the uh, color changes. If you want to color change, here's an example of one of my mock-ups. Uh, I've changed them on a knit row and I'll show you where is the most easily changing. Uh, but if you want to keep it the same in one color, don't worry about that. But just know that changing it on a knit row is going to be best. I'll show you more of that on part two. Casting on. For the skinny retreat cowl, you're going to cast on 96 stitches for the small, 120 stitches for the medium, and 144 for the large. For the chunky retreat cowl, you're going to cast on 60 stitches for the small, 84 stitches for the medium, and 108 stitches for the large. I do recommend the long tail cast on or the chain cast on using a crochet hook uh, for this cowl. You can use either one. You can also use other cast ons that you uh, wish. I like the long tail because um, I can tighten it up easily and it has a very nice polished look to it. The chain cast on has a little bit bulkier edge, but it's still nice and pretty and tidy. So I'm going to show you how to do the long tail first uh, in just a few stitches. And I do have a tutorial that's longer and more detailed and slow down at the links below as well as one for the chain. I'm going to chain cast on for this one because it's nice and large and I think it's an easy one to do. So let's first go into long tail cast on. First of all you want to measure around your loom three times so you can measure around easily once and then triple the amount uh, of yarn that that you measured around and then you're going to tie your slip knot. This is how I do mine. I just wrap around my finger twice, take the back loop over the front a little bit and do it one more time. And you have your slip knot. And there's all this extra yarn here is the tail. So I always like to say tail toward me and then the ball at the back. Okay, so we're gonna slip it onto our first peg here. And of course you can go in either direction. And I'm going to go to peg two, get my loom tool out. I'm going to E-wrap with my tail yarn you wrap around peg two just one time. You can wrap peg three if you want to go ahead, but the next step is to grab your ball yarn and you wrap knit around that peg two. So we're gonna go around peg two and lift up and over. And then we want to tighten up our beginning uh, peg here. We wanna tighten up those stitches as much as possible. So I like to do that. And then we go on to the next one. We're going to e-wrap with the tail yarn and then we U-wrap knit with the ball yarn, lift up and over, and then tighten that up, okay? And then you just continue on. E-wrap with the tail, U-wrap with the ball. And you could do kind of a flat knit, that's fine too, because it's just gonna be uh, nice and tight, okay? The E-wrap cause it to set up uh, in a particular way and then um, the U-wrap knit makes it, makes it nice and tidy up on top of it. Okay, so continue doing that. Uh, work all of your stitches in your cast on, and then we'll go to round one. Now let's go to the chain cast on. 
For the chain cast on, we need a crochet hook that fits in between our pegs and will easily grab onto our yarn. So I happen to be using on this chunky one a uh, size M13, which is a nine millimeter, but of course you can use a smaller size. And of course with the skinny loom, you'll need something smaller. Start with the tail and a slip knot. So I'm gonna wrap it around my finger twice, take the back loop over the front slightly and do it one more time. Don't tighten this too tight just yet. We're gonna go ahead and put your uh, crochet hook into that little uh, slip knot and pull on it slightly. We want to keep it a nice teardrop shape still because we need to pull our uh, hook straight through that again in a moment. Now put your tail toward the inside of your loom and your hook. We're going to pick up our loom and you can see I've already put a stitch marker on peg one. So that's important to see that peg one there. So go ahead and place one. You can also put a couple rubber bands around there, whatever helps. Now we're going to put our yarn in between our first peg and what will be the very last peg. All right, now I'm gonna put my crochet hook between my first and my second peg. And I'm gonna take my yarn and wrap it around this hook. So I'm gonna go all the way around and go around the hook and it catches right there. And we're just gonna pull that yarn through this loop back here. So you can hold on with your other fingers that tail and just pull it right on through. You can see it slide through that little loop there, right? And we're gonna go to the next two stitches. We're going in between peg two and three and yarn over, wrap that yarn around the hook and we're gonna pull it straight through here, this little teardrop, okay? And you can tighten these up certainly, okay? Because we don't want this to be um, loose on the edge of our cowl. So go in between the next pair and wrap around and pull through and tighten that up. Go through the next set, wrap yarn over, pull through, tighten up, and continue going around. So once you kind of get your rhythm, you can see how it easily will cast on. And you can see why I like the flexi loom in this one because it easily just moves along with me and I don't have the bulk of a rigid loom. Again, you can use other looms that aren't flexible like this. This one reminds me of working with um, circular needles. So if you drop it, that's fine. Just make sure this loop is on there uh, nice and big. Put your hook in and continue again. So go ahead and continue casting on. Uh, when you get to the, uh, I'm gonna pause and uh, meet you back up when you get to the very last stitch and I'll show you what to do to complete working this in the round. All right, we'll see you in a moment. All right, I have worked all of my pegs around here and I have this last loop here. I've put it around the last peg, but then I have one more loop and I'm just going to place it on top of peg one and then tighten up. So now you can see I actually have two loops on peg one and I'm just going to treat these together as one loop. So when I make my first round, these will get worked together. You could knit it over now, but I find it just works better just to have them uh, treated as one stitch. So if you worked with the long tail cast on, you can uh, go ahead and cut your extra long tail that's left over just to a nice manageable one. And let's begin with round one. The stitch along is also about learning how to read the pattern, so I'll do it as quick as I can. Both the skinny and the chunky both work the ribbing pattern exactly the same. If you haven't worked with the chart before, I have it down below and it reflects that. So let's look at the written part first. You can see that round one, it starts off with a knit one, purl one, and then we repeat from this little asterisk right here back and forth until the end of the round. So let's go see what this looks like on our chart. If we zoom in on chart, we can see the chart key shows um, our little icons. And right here we can see that our first row right here and our very first stitch is a blank space and that is a knit stitch. And then the very next one is a dot and that dot means purl. Okay, so we're just going to be knitting one, purling one all the way across our entire row. And we'll get to the rest of this here in a moment. So let's start with round one, knit one, purl one. All right, so if you did the long tail cast on, you won't see this extra little um, line here, but uh, if you did the chain, this is how you do it. You just go ahead and you wrap knit either one and you're gonna lift uh, the bottom stitch over the top. If you did the chain cast on, you're, you're knitting over both of them. So you can do them one at a time or you can do them all at the same time. Okay, so we've knit that first stitch in a U wrap knit method, okay? Don't use E wraps on this pattern unless I tell you to. So we're gonna put our yarn forward and we're gonna go underneath 
peg two and we're going to purl here. So if you haven't purled a stitch, you're just going to insert your little tool here and pull up the yarn. That's your working yarn, the one you're coming from the ball with. You're going to get a loop and then you just take off this old stitch either with your fingers or your tool and you have this new loop and you place that on the peg tighten it up and that becomes your purl stitch that's your next stitch so you just repeat those across go ahead and you wrap knit around for the next stitch knit over and then purl the following it works really well on um, these links with the flexi loom because you can see that the very first stitch of your link is going to always be knit and the very second stitch uh, of the link is going to be purl and you just repeat so the first part of the link is knit the second part of the link is purl repeated all the way around so go ahead and do that pause your video and i will meet you back for uh, round two see you soon all right, so we've completed round one, and now you just want to repeat round one three times on rounds two through four. On the chart, it's down here, and you can see it will emerge as a little ribbing pattern here. So you can see rounds one, two, three, and four are knit purl all the way across. So go ahead and do that. Pause your video, and I will see you for round five. See you soon. All right, you are on round five, ready for the next part, which is the diamond lace stitch pattern. Now it's also called the figure eight stitch that some people use. And so I'm clarifying calling it the diamond lace stitch because I want to tell you exactly what you're doing in this stitch. So we're going to be doing something called slipping the stitch first, and then we're going to e-wrap knit the next one. So we're going to skip that very first peg and we're going to e-wrap knit it and then we're going to go back to peg one that we slipped and we're going to e-wrap knit that as well so it does this sort of figure eight pattern and i'll show you that on the loom uh, but i've spelled it out here so you can uh, see how it's written out and then we're going to be repeating that um, the, on the skinny and the chunky just slightly different so let's look at this chart here so for the skinny we're going to be working rounds five six and seven working this stitch pattern. So you can see that my little icon is a two on it. And uh, that means that each stitch is actually getting worked twice because you saw that we were slipping one, knitting the next one and coming back and knitting that very first stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that again where we start on the next stitch and we slip it, we knit the next stitch and then we come back and knit that second stitch again and repeat. So you can see that everything is going to get done twice as much. And actually every round is going to be actually twice as high because it's like doing two rounds in one. You'll see this um, quickly increase in our height versus uh, when we did the ribbing. So um, for now, let's just look at uh, both the skinny and the chunky on round five, how to do the diamond lace stitch. We are on peg one. We are going to make the yarn go into the back of the loom and we're skipping or slipping this first peg and we're going to e-wrap, come around the second peg and then we come around the back side of peg one and come to the front of it and then to the back again. So from the top, it looks like a figure eight. So let's do that from the top. So we're going around peg one to the from the back, around peg two in the back to the front of peg two in between both pegs and then we come around to the back of peg one and then that's forward in the front and then we come to uh, in between these two pegs again so it makes a figure eight so again uh, around both of them to the front in between around one again and in between and then we're ready to knit off so we're just going to knit over pegs one and peg two and now our yarn is in between the two stitches that we just worked. We're going to begin with peg two. So we're going to slip peg two. We're going to e-wrap peg three, come back and e-wrap peg one and knit off. So now you can see peg two has been worked twice and peg three is ready to be worked a second time. You just continue uh, slipping e-wrap one, and then go back and e-wrap the one before that and knit off. So make that diamond lace stitch all the way around. Come back on the final few stitches and I'll show you how to finish up that round and how we repeat on both the skinny and the chunky sizes. See you soon. 
All right, so we're at the end of our round. I do have one last peg to do. And so that is just going to be another one of these figure eights or slipping the stitch, e-wrapping the second one, coming back and wrapping the first, and then knitting off. So this is actually how you'll end uh, the very last round that you do in this stitch pattern. And when I knit off, you're gonna see where my yarn ends up. Oops, right here. So the yarn is in between these two pegs and uh, their next step is to repeat these rounds for our two different sizes, the skinny or the two different gauges, the skinny and the chunky. Uh, but I want to point that out here because when you are done repeating those, you want to make sure that your yarn is in between these two when we go on to part two. All right, let's look at the pattern. I am looking at my chunky instructions here and you can see that unlike the chart you saw before, you can see only two rounds of uh, rows five and six or rounds five and six. And that's because you're only going to repeat it one more time for the chunky size. So the instructions here just says round six, repeat round five once more. All right, so that is it on that. And let's go back over to the skinny. And you can see here we have rounds six through seven and we're repeating round five twice. So on our chart, it agrees we need around six and seven repeated. So go ahead and make your repeats and I will see you at the next part. All right, so how was that? Well, I'm excited to see your progress on week one. And if you'd like to share photos with me and everyone else, be sure and go on Instagram. You can follow me at Goodknit Kisses and tag me in your post just by typing at Goodknit Kisses and then type in the hashtag Loom Knit Retreat Cowl. Even if you don't want to write a whole bunch of things, if you will just put in the little pound sign and type in with no spaces, Loom Knit Retreat Cowl, and that will be a great link for everyone because you can just click on that and see everyone's photos, whether they're using solid colors, if there are changing colors, um, it will be really fun to see them all come along and join in in a community. And it's so much better with a community, right? It's like your, it's like your neighbors are all doing it because, you know, our neighbors aren't doing that next to us, right? <laughs> We're all neighbors on this worldwide community, right? So I can't wait to see you on part two. Be sure and tag me on Instagram and do the hashtag uh, Luminate Retreat Cowl. Tag me, good knit kisses. Oh, be sure and click the link down in the video description below and see the link for week two if you miss our newsletter and you can subscribe to the newsletter as well. All right, bye. Happy looming. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.